Hi everyone, welcome to the new tutorial on flow over a V notch. So you can see the picture here, it's uh, looking like a, a V, right? So we'll measure flow over this wear, it is kind of wear. So we previously discussed, right, what types of wear we have. We have a rectangular wear, we have triangular wear. So that is basically a triangular wear. So what is the benefit of using this triangular wear over rectangular wear? So we'll uh, mathematically uh, try to understand that why this V notch, we're calling it as a notch because it is kind of a notch right here, this way, it's kind of a notch. That's what it's calling uh, V notch. So it has a benefit, you can, uh, if you compare with that uh, rectangular wear and that triangular wear. So what is the difference between these two wears? We can see for rectangular wear we have a base, right? B, but for triangular wear there is no base, the base is zero. So what is the benefit of having zero base? So let's see what is the benefit of using this V notch and why we are gonna use the V notch because V notch can measure a widely yeah widely varying flow from low head to high head. So that is the benefit of using this uh, V notch or rectangular wear. So it depends on the angle theta, that theta. So we have to be able to measure the theta and based on this theta, we'll see that this wear is useful or not over rectangular wear. So let me just explain this wear because this is a V notch and we have right an angle theta so this theta is uh, 90 degree for this experiment but uh, this theta may vary from uh, 60 45 uh, 90 and it may be 120 degree so we'll basically focus on uh, theta is equal to 90 degree for today's experiment so keep in mind that this shape is it is a triangle and it is a right angle triangle this angle is theta, that means this must be 45 degree and 45 degree, that's it. Okay, so just if I want to compare with rectangular wear, so what I saw in the previous experiment, that rectangular wear may have contraction, right? What type of contraction we saw there? Maybe this type of contraction, right? So that is the contraction. It is end contraction. And this contraction basically depends on what? If the depth of water is y, so we know that weighted perimeter is this one. Weighted perimeter means P is equal to if that is the B, total B, so uh, B plus 2y, because we have y here, water is touching the line or the section of the channel and this is the length of the base b and we have another depth of water y so that's why it is b plus 2y but for triangular cross section if that is the top or water level so what is the length of the weighted perimeter so that is the length right there is no b b is equal to zero and it has only two sides like we have two sides for rectangular wear. So that's the difference between these two. But the most important point here, the contraction. The contraction is happening here for base and as well as for sides. But for triangular cross section or for V notch, we don't have contraction because of the base because there is no base. The contraction we may have it is only because of the sides only so that's why if i want to vary this head sometimes for low flow the head will be this the height will be here and it will increase right so if we just uh, want to vary the head from low range to high range the contraction the contraction right the contraction uh, that will be constant but for rectangular wear, the contraction won't be constant if you just vary the head from low to high. That will also be varying. Because of that issue, 
the coefficient of the stars that on B cannot stand. So for rectangular channel, CD is not higher, right? But for triangular or venous, CD is high. So if CD is high, that, man, that means we can measure the flow, right, more accurately than this one. We'll have head loss and we have less perimeter and we don't have any base B. So that is the benefit for rectangular wear. The coefficient of contraction, it won't be constant because of that base because we're adding a constant B to the perimeter because the contraction depends on the perimeter and the sides. Then perimeter is a function of the sides, right, and the base. But for triangular wheel, we don't have the base. That's why the contraction will have only because of the sides only. So for triangular wheel, the coefficient of contraction, it will be constant for wide range of heads. So then what will happen? The coefficient of discharge, that will be higher. It will increase. And we know the coefficient of discharge, CD, is equal to QA divided by QT. So in today's experiment, the main objectives are the same. As before, we have to calculate CD, and in order to calculate CD, we have to calculate QT, the theoretical flow rate, and we'll also calculate the actual flow rate as well. So the main difficulty, because the shape is not regular, yeah, it's regular, but it's triangular shape, so that's why the mathematics for deriving the equation of QT it's not simple for this one, okay? So let me just try to derive the uh, expression or equation for QT for this V naught. But before that, what are the practical applications of this V naught as of before? Because V naught is very useful and it has advantages over rectangular wear. And we know the wear is a flow measuring device and we can use that uh, v notch as well for measuring flow for any channel, but this is very useful for low head and low flow and high flow. That is the benefit, but for wear, we can't even measure the head for low head. That is not good for low head. That is only, yeah, yeah it will give you the better result for higher head because of that contraction kind of thing. It can't handle that contraction. Con contraction is not constant because of the base B. So let me quickly derive the expression as before for rectangular wear. What we took, we took right. We consider if the total depth of water is h. We just assumed an infinitesimal depth, right, and a segment we have. But that time v was constant. But for v naught c, we are also considering the same infinitesimal slit or segment dh and dh is varying right from top to this uh, segment the total height above this slit or segment is h and h is varying from top to the bottom or in a downward direction so that's why what will be the area of this we calculated the area for the rectangular we are as well, so we have to be able to calculate there. But for rectangular wear, the area was dA was pretty simple, B dH. But for because B was constant, this segment was constant, right? Across that height. But here B will be changing that that B. That B will be changing if it is here, right? If it is here, the B is different than here. So that's why V is changing, so we have to be able to relate that cross-sectional area in terms of height. So let me divide, since the angle in between these two sides is theta, so we can divide, we can divide this this way. So we will have theta divided by 2, and that part, it will also be theta by 2. So what do we have to do for this length, we have to be able to calculate this length, right? We can see it's a triangle, 
and we have another triangle there these are same similar triangle so if we are able to measure this length so the total length will be two times of this length right but we have to know this height right but we know only this h but we know total h so what will be the height of that side it will be capital h minus small h right so that is the height now we know the height now we know the tangle theta by 2 right we can easily calculate that side if that side is x and we know this angle so that will be the base and that is the height so what is the relationship between the base and the height because this angle is 90 degree means it's a right angle it's a right angle right it's a right angle triangle so since it's a right angle triangle that is the base so what is the relationship between base and height or the perpendicular so it's tan since the angle is theta by 2 so tan theta we can take tan theta is equal to that is the perpendicular x for this time divided by it is capital H minus small h right so that is the height because the total height is h and this is small h so that is this so x will be h minus h small h and 10 theta by 2 so that is the distance so if I want to measure the entire distance so it will be two times right so now the b so I'm calling it uh, db is equal to 2 x so it will be 2 times h minus h n 10 theta by 2 okay so now what we have to do we have to be able to calculate the area of this segment right area of this segment then what will be the area of the segment da as before it is nothing but db and the height dh right so now we have that 2 h minus h tan theta divided by 2 and dh we have that da if i want to calculate how much flow is going on right through this small slit it will be that one dqt because we are applying a theory here so that will be dqt and dqt is nothing but da and v right you know v we can call it vh whatever it is means at height h what is the velocity so for same equation we applied for a tank because what is flowing like this way see you can see that is the actual uh, setting for this that is the lab experiment so we have that venous it is a metal plate that is the venous water is flowing right what is flowing you can see so we are going to calculate the flow right that is flowing over or through this triangular section so we are calculating the area right we are calculating the entire area so what we are going to do, we are going to integrate to calculate the entire area. So at first, we are going to apply the Varnoli's principle here that is located right where we have the velocity. And we are going to apply another point there where the velocity is zero, but it is located at a certain height. We have a height difference. So what is the height difference for this one, right? Means if we consider that is our weir, that is our weir, and we, if we have flow like this previously, we saw that for a rectangular weir, we are going to apply in between this point and that point. So we have a height difference h. So then we saw that here we have velocity v, but here we considered velocity is zero, right? If we can remember the assumption that we consider for rectangular wear it is same because that is a general assumption for every wears right for every wear we can consider the same thing that f the pressure should be hydrostatic the approach velocity should be zero the fluid should be considered as non-viscous and we should ignore uh, the surface tension as well 
So these are the major consideration and what a surface should be horizontal. So if we apply the same principle here as before, if we go back to the previous experiment, I mentioned that in details. So what I considered that here at point 1 and here at point 2, for point 1 we don't have any velocity, so velocity here is 0, right? We don't have any pressure because it is at the atmosphere, pressure is 0. Whatever we have, it is located just h, right? The height is h, the elevation at h is equal to, because we are applying the Bernoulli's principle, Bernoulli's principle is nothing but at every section of a liquid flow or any, yeah, any liquid flow, the summation of elevation head, pressure head, and velocity head will be constant. So we're ignoring the frictional loss, the viscosity, that's why we're writing equal sign here. And for point two, we have velocity, V square over twice G, we don't have any pressure head because it is open to atmosphere, it is zero. Plus, do we have any elevation? No, because we are measuring the reference line is passing through that point, so zero. So V is equal to root over 2G is as before. So the expression for V, we got the expression for V, we are going to use that expression here, okay? We are going to use that expression here. So what we will have for QT, it is 2 h minus h and 10 theta divided by 2 and it will be dh and uh, root over 2g and h. So that is the qt, small qt, that will happen, right? This flow will be through this small slit. But if I want to measure, right, the flow, for that head, when the height is h, then we'll have entire cross section. So we have to be able to measure the cross section of the triangle. If we apply, yeah, we know the area of the triangle, but for this case, since the head is varying and the velocity is varying and theta is constant, so that's why we are applying this principle of continuity equation. Now, if I want to measure the total head QT from this height to H, then I have to integrate that equation from 0 to that height H as before. We'll do that, right? So let me just quickly integrate that one. So in order to measure, because now we have flow here, if I increase the head, it will cover this part. So I have to be able to measure, right, the head for from here to H, that part. So then we'll have QT, okay, D QT, so it is uh, 0 to QT is equal to 0 to H, and then what we have, it is uh, 2 H minus H, 10 theta divided by 2, and we have uh, D h and we have root over 2 g and h to the power half if i just yeah bring it uh, bring h out of that uh, root over sign then we can put all this constant tan theta by 2 is constant for a specific setup so that's why this is constant 2 is constant right and root over 2 g these are also constant so we can write 2 and root over 2 tan theta divided by 2 and root over 2g, these are constant term, I'm just bringing, right, this in front of that integration sign, so I'm keeping all these variables there, h minus h, and then we have h to the power half, and here will be dh, right, so now it's simple, we'll have qt there on the left side, and then we are keeping this constant term, tan theta by 2, root over 2g, and here, I'm, yeah, using that square bracket, and that will be h, I'm just simplifying h to the power half, because that capital A, it is also constant, minus h to the power, that, that's, this h has one power, and that h has half, so that will be 3 by 2, means 1.5, so that is that, and we have to use, right, 
so we have to use that h2h let me just uh, simplify again to 10 theta by 2 and root over 2g if i use that bracket and if i change the limit individually so it will be h and h to the power half dh minus 0 to h and h to the power 3 by 2 and dh and closing the bracket now i have 2 tan theta divided by 2 it is constant and at the same time i have root over 2g i'm just using square bracket again and h is constant so putting is outside of the integration and then what we will have we will have h because we know the integration of x to the power n dx is nothing but x to the power n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 as before right that is the formula for so now we have the variable h so what will be the integration half right half plus 1 divided by half plus 1 so I'm not using the limit yet so it is this minus so for this case it will be same h3 divided by 2 plus 1 and 3 divided by 2 plus 1 so that is the limit of the integration closing the square bracket then 2 10 theta by 2 root over 2g and I'm now gonna use the limit okay so h so as denominator there it is 3 by 2 and if I just keep it there it will be 2 divided by 3 and the h the power will be 3 by 2 and if I use the limit it will be h right h to the power 3 divided by 2 minus for this one since it is half right 3 by 2 plus 1 what will happen 3 plus 2 divided by 2 so it will be 5 divided by 2 so that's why uh, if I just keep it in front of this it will be 3 right divided by 5 and if I use the same expression for small a's and if I replace that with capital A's because we have 0 here we don't have any value so it will be 5 divided by 3 so now we have that expression so 2 tan theta divided by 2 root over 2g and here if I we have capital H here and H so power is 1 3 by 2 so that will be 3 by 2 and h to the power 5 divided by what 2 right is it okay so that is 3 divided by 2 and 2 divided by 3 so now what will happen 5 divided by 2 so that will also be 5 divided by 2 that is also 5 divided by 2 so that is not 3 it is 2 okay let me quickly finish that one it is 2 divided by 5 and 5 divided by 2 okay so similarly it will be 2 divided by 5 and h to the power 5 divided by 2 so what we have we have same power but the co coefficients are different right so we can just uh, simplify to 10 theta divided by 2 root over 2g right if I just uh, simplify what will happen this 3 and 5 it will be 15 and now it will be 5 times 2 it will be 10 h to the power 5 divided by 2 minus it will be uh, 3 and 6 h to the power 5 divided by 2 finally what we're gonna get 10 theta by 2 root over 2g and that will be 4 divided by 15 h to the power 5 divided by 2 so that is the expression for qt if i just uh, simplify once again and i'm clearly writing the equation here qt is equal to if i multiply this 2 by that 4 it will be 8 divided by 15 and 10 theta divided by 2 root over 2g and h 
h to the power 5 divided by 2, see. So that is the expression. So that is the expression for calculating theoretical flow rate, right, for that rectangular cross section of a weir. So that is pretty complex and the derivation is not that simple. So once we have that QT, see for any specific weir, we know the angle, right? That's that theta. Once we have the value of angle, so this constant and G constant, so everything will be constant up to this point. So that is our main important point. So we can consider that as K. So our expression becomes k h to the power 5 divided by 2. So can you just uh, remember the previous expression? It was 3 by 2 means 1.5 1, 1 for rectangular uh, weir. But for triangular weir, the exponent, this value is 2.5, right? It is increasing. So that is the expression we have, qt is equal to k times h to the power 5 divided by 2. And the value of k is this part. If you know the angle theta, we can calculate k. And then that's it. It's pretty simple. Right? So we know how to calculate the value of the exponent. If I want to calculate, that, that's done. Let me just uh, quickly show you the objectives. So you find the value of cd and to plot QT versus QA in a plain graph paper. Now it's asking, yeah, we can plot here QT and QA. It will give you a straight line or something like that. And main thing is that one. Again, we have to calculate the value. We have to be able to calculate the value of exponent N and the coefficient C. So if I want to calculate CD as before, once we have QA, we'll calculate QA as before. We have a tank, we'll collect the water, and then we'll measure the time to just uh, store water for 10 centimeters. We know the size of the tank. Then we'll have the volume, and then if we divide this volume by time, then we'll have QA. So that's the QA, and we can calculate QT from that equation I just mentioned, right? You can easily remember the equation. It is nothing complex. QT is equal to its 8 divided by 15 and 10 theta divided by 2 and root over 2g and h to the power 5 divided by 2. So once we have that, we can write that expression QA is equal to uh, CD and QT. Okay, And we know that CD and QT means this part is K, we assume. So K h to the power even 5. And we can assume another constant for this part because CD is constant, K is constant for a specific rectangular weir. So we can write uh, C and H to the power N and that will be QA. So the expression we got, we have to calibrate this formula. We have to find the value of C as before from different values of QA and different values of h. We have to plot that now values on a log log graph paper as before. I'll show you that and then we'll calculate the slope of the straight line. We'll get the value of n and then we'll use another point to calculate the value of c, right? So let me quickly show you the calculations as before. We know, that, right, how to calculate. So it's pretty simple. If I get time, I'll go back to that questions we have. It's not that difficult. So what we have to do, you'll know. So before that experiment, you will know the value of theta. For this experiment, most of the cases you will see in the laboratory, we have the 90 degree V notch. So that's that. And if we know the theta, so we are calculating the values of K that way because we know the total equation, right? The K is nothing but... 8 divided by 15 and 10 theta divided by 2 and we have 2g. So if I want to calculate the value, it's 8 divided by 15 and 10, 90 degree divided by 2 and we have root over 2 into 
981 because we are using the values of G as 981 centimeter per second square, right? So what will be the answer for K? So K will be, uh, it's let me 10, right? I'm calculating 10, 45 degree, you know that. It's 1, nothing but 1. It should be multiplied by root over 2 into 981. And then it should be multiplied by 8 divided by 15. Then what we are going to get? We are going to get 20, right? We get 23.6237. So that is the value of a constant. So it's there is no unit we can't use that so the cross-sectional area of the tank as before we have that one so 45 degree into 30.5 so that's the cross-sectional area where we are just allowing water to flow it's uh 1372.5 centimeter square so the initial point gauge reading is zero means when the tank was here we fix a point gauge this is the gauge point gauge it was reading was zero and then we use point gauge here when the reading is 10. So that's why the total depth of water, right, that is 10. So that is 10, right? And what we are going to measure here, we have volume. So we can calculate the volume of water. So V is nothing but 1372.5 into 10. So it will give us this much. 13725 right this is centimeter key we know the time 20.47 so what will be the actual flow rate actual flow rate will be right uh, v divided by t uh, that means 13725 divided by 20.47 so it's going to get you 670 point four nine oh no not this one it is four uh, six seventy point four nine that is the unit centimeter cube per second so effective head here can you see we have to measure the value of h what is the value of h effective head so that's why it mentioned that the datum water level was zero at the beginning and then water level above vertex we have 4.63 so what is that so let me show you the actual figure here so here right when we put the gaze at vertex it was zero and when we have water here for this case so we are measuring that is 4.63 centimeters so now for this case h is this height if you increase the flow rate for another group or another setup then h will increase and this is how we'll change the flow and we will have different values of h and different values of qa means the actual flow rate and we'll use those values to calculate right to calculate the exponent n and the coefficient c so here is that effective head 4.4.63 4 so what will be the value of, because we know H, right? Capital A is to calculate the value of QT. So we know K, so we don't have to repeat that long equation. So you know QT is nothing but K is to the power 5 divided by 2. We only need H and we know K 23.62 multiplied by 4.63 to the power 5 divided by 2, right? So 23.62 into 4.63 to the power 2.5, it's uh, giving you that value 1089.51. So 1089.51. So what will be the coefficient of discharge? 670.49 divided by this flow rate theoretical flow rate uh, getting 0 0.615 the good news is that we'll have they're asking a question that what is the general in general coefficient of discharge for a venus that has a 90 degree angle it is 0 0.62 it is 0 0.62 
right it's written there if i want to show you that value it's there or 0 0.6 see at lower head the frictional effect see it is cd is 0 0.6 but for our case we have 0 0.61 or 62 that means the experiment is pretty accurate right these data are basically taken from real experiment so you can use this data to calculate all these values and you can practice so that is the theoretical and we have coefficient of discharge flow rate from flow rate right actual and theoretical so we are repeating that experiment for different uh, flow rate different actual flow rate for different groups we have five groups and we are just uh, tabulating all this thing here and next thing is to plot right so here I'm plotting again using that log log graph or in the last experiment and I think in one experiment uh, before I also uh, yeah demonstrated how to plot this in Excel and you can use any uh, log log graph paper hard paper you can plot that manually as well there is not a problem so here we have to extract point for this one right we have one point here so since it is one it is two three so that will be four so the first point is four and what is the corresponding flow rate that is 1000 that is 100 200 300 400 500 so that will be 500 okay so four and 500 that is one point so we have another point right another point is there and four five six seven right that is seven because it is ten so another point is seven and the corresponding flow rate is this is one thousand that will be two thousand three thousand and that is ten thousand so that will be two thousand so seven and two thousand we have two points so we know the equation for n because we have q a is equal to c is to the power n this time the actual or the theoretical value of n is 2.5 so our expected value should be 2.5 not 2.5 but close to 2.5 then we have the equation log q a1 divided by log q a2 and this divided by log h1 divided by h2 so let me just uh, put this value here that will be 500 divided by 2000 means one fourth of it and log that is 4 divided by 7 if I want to calculate the value of n so log 500 divided by 2000 and divided by log 4 divided by seven right and it's giving me 2.477 it's pretty close to 2.5 that means the plotting is pretty accurate i just tried once and it's working pretty well so we have the value of qa is equal to c is to the power 2.477 now we need to calculate the value of c so i'm going to use the first point right so that will be 500 is equal to C is unknown and H is 4 to the power 2.477. So what will be the value of C? Uh, so 4 to the power 2.477 and it 500 should be divided by those values. So it is nothing but 16.126. So we have the calibrated equation. So that is the calibrated equation we can write again here. It is QA actual flow rate 16.126 and is to the power 2.477. So if you write down this equation right just on the wall of that V notch, then someone will come and measure the value of H and then if they have any calculator they can easily calculate the value of QA but if you don't want to do that what do you have to do you have to use different values of H right within the range of the maximum height because see if you have a Venus like this if the total height is like 10 centimeter and if you use 100 centimeter so you will have 
big graph so you don't need to do that you have to use the values within the range of that height you can divide these uh, values 2 4 6 8 10 you can do that and you can take 12 and because your measurement will be within that limit so you have to use the use the values within that limit and we'll calculate the values of a and you can plot like this as before right so once you have this graph and you can paste this graph on the wall of that flow measuring device whether it is rectangular wheel or any other device you can do that and someone will come and they will measure the flow rate they want to measure the flow rate but in order to do that what do they have to do they have to measure the value of h so we have the value of h for example 7 centimeters so what will be the actual flow rate not the theoretical because we don't want to derive the equation while measuring the actual flow rate so beforehand we have to do all these things so here comes in the calibration so that is the calibration equation we have here so once we have the value of h we can go to the graph and we can directly follow this line and we have the flow rate right so for this case it is that is 2000 that is 1500 so definitely that will be qa that will be 17 right 100 uh, 1750 centimeter cube per second from my expectation but if I use the actual equation QA is equal to 16 point what was the equation 126 126 and is to the power 2.477 if I use that equation so what will be the value from the equation right if someone make mistake but it won't be that much mistake so we have 7 to the power 2.477 let me just into 7 to the power 2.477 okay so what we have wait a minute it is uh, 16.126 maybe that is a little bit uh, different 1.26 and 7 we have measurement 7 uh, to the power 2.477 okay yeah what we have 19 nine nine so that centimeter see yeah so from my eye I can see but it is not exactly in in the middle of that because it is log log it is general it is not log log so it is pretty easy if you just divide this definitely it will be like more than that exactly if you use the equation it will be something like that but it is not even 2000 the line is because I didn't even maybe yeah extracted the data pretty accurately but that's that we can even assume 100 or 200 centimeters is not a matter but you can quickly understand what is the value so that is the right we are using equation a calibration curve to measure the value of actual flow rate so this is how we can do that right so that's that I think yeah we may have some question right yeah let me just quickly try to answer that one so why does the Venus give more accurate flow measurement than any other weirs and orifice when the flow is slightly fluctuating see once we have flow that is fluctuating from here 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 because we don't have that base since we don't have the base what will be the perimeter weighted perimeter it will be only the sides only this side and this side right so y1 plus y2 there is no b term it is zero but for rectangular wear we have the b term b plus 2y for this one that's why the end contraction the contraction right this contraction will be because of the sides only but for this one we have also base the contraction will be for sides and base only that's why for rectangular wear if you vary the flow the coefficient of contraction it won't be constant it will vary with the head but for triangular section the contraction will also be constant if you vary the head because you don't have base because of that constant contraction coefficient the CD will be constant and that will give you the accurate result than any other 
flow measuring device. And on which factor does the value of CD depends? You just mentioned that one. It is it is depending right on the contraction if it is fully contracted or not. When the flow we have lower head flow is here then we have fully contracted wear. Once we have the fully contracted wear, then the coefficient of contraction is constant and the value is more accurate. The CD is increased. But for higher head, the contraction is not fully. Then we have less CD. What is the average value of CD for a 90 degree Venus? It is a 0 0.6. We just saw and from our experiment since it is experiment not theory so we have 0 0.615 that is acceptable does it depends on flow condition partially fully contracted yes if it is uh, fully contracted that that means i saw to, just mentioned right if it is fully contracted because contraction will happen because of the sides and fully contraction condition will arise if it is low flow then for low flow we have fully contraction and definitely the average value will increase, right? But for fully contraction, the coefficient of contraction is constant. But for partially contracted wear, the contraction coefficient is not constant. That means CD will change. So that th that's the explanation. Yes, it depends on the flow condition as well. So determine the discharge of water over a 60 degree triangular wear if the measured head is 0. Point six to three feet so they're asking okay because we don't have 90 degrees so we have to calculate the k again i'm going to calculate everything it is eight divided by 15 10 theta divided by 2 and root over 2g and we have h to the power 5 divided by 2 so 8 divided by 15 and 10 we have 60 right 60 degree divided by 2 means 30 degree 10, 30 means 1 over root over 3, and then we have root 2, and g is 32.2 because the height is given in terms of feet, and h is 0 0.623 to the power 2.5. Let me calculate quickly. It is uh, nothing but, okay, 10, 30. Let me calculate 10, 30. Okay and into 8 divided by 15 we have that and this should be multiplied by 2 into 32.2 and that should be multiplied by 0 0.623 to the power 2.5 so the value I'm getting 0 0.757 since it is in feet this feet cube per second so that is the theoretical flow rate right for a triangular wear of 60 degree angle okay so that's that i'm gonna stop uh, here sharing my that screen okay so today we just saw what is the benefit of triangular wear of our rectangular wears so it, yeah it's useful there so we are using that at the end of this that is the application practical application of bernoulli's theorem that we are yeah, calculating since a uh, few experiment we saw that right as before so if we want to use widely if you want to measure flow rate from any wear or for, from any channel using that rectangular wear so you will have more head loss but if you want to use this triangular wear you will have less loss and the flow measurement will be more accurate than the previous all this experiment we have so these are the practical applications so now we can remember uh, remember that what now we have done we so far we completed the first experiment as a center of pressure and then the Wernerlis theorem and then what we did from that Wernerlis theorem we derive the equation for venturi meter right from that venturi meter what we have done we have orifice meter and orifice meter after that we uh, demonstrated the flow through a uh, external cylindrical mouthpiece so orifice meter is better than venturi meter and mouthpiece is better than orifice and then we have 
rectangular wear. It is a flow measuring device for a channel or canal. And then we have that triangular wear that is also better than rectangular wear. And next, in the next experiment, what we will see, we are done with all these uh, practical applications of Bernoulli's theorem, but in the next experiment, we will see the loss, head loss, the major loss and minor loss. We will calculate the uh, loss because of the fittings and settings, and we will also calculate the head loss because of the friction. So these are the most important experiment we are going to even finish within the next uh, two tutorials. So then this entire course will be finished, right? If you want to uh, repeat all those experiments, all these videos are there, you can calculate and you can understand and you can you know, reproduce everything if you want. And if you have any query and question, you can ask to your instructor. And if you need any help, you can search any help uh, for, yeah, you can search for help in the internet or you can even ask here in the comment box. If I get time, I'll try to reply. And then, yeah, even you can you know, read the main textbook and you can find out the answers right i'm just uh, trying to make the video short because of that i'm just giving the answer pretty shortly but we have a lot of explanation you can get the explanation from the book okay just uh thank you so let me having said that i'm gonna finish it so thank you very much for watching this video and stay safe until then see you in the next tutorial bye